What up, players? Wolvos Tail in this mud. I'm back, and we are getting into uh, part number two of how to paint a spooky Krell model. So, the paints we're going to be using in this step are chainmail, a sermon blue, bad at black, dwarf bronze. Devlin Mud, Thraka Green, Codex Gray, and if we get lucky and there's enough time, some Justin Bubo Chris Brown, Bubonic Brown. So let's start with the chain mail. First step in this video is we are going to paint the um, different areas on the model that are silver. So first the spikes on Krell's back. All of these skulls here, it's oops, kind of gonna be kind of hard to find out where for you to see where to paint this metallic uh, silver, but just use your best judgment. Okay, we're also going to be painting, there are some parts on the model that are, I guess, like rivets on his helmet especially, that we're going to be painting silver, so... It looks like he's only got rivets on his helmet. There's one on his knee pad. Yeah, so this should be fine. So let's do the ones on his helmet first. All you have to do is look for the rivets that are sticking out. When using any kind of metallic paint, you want to make sure that you put a little bit of water in it because with all paints, it's it's not good to paint straight out of the pot. You should have a little bit of water or medium or uh, flow paint, flow retardant, so that the paint doesn't dry. But with metallics, especially, ah! why do you keep knocking me over? In my head, Krell sounds like a Christian Bale as Batman. Alright, so that's it. Really simple for that step. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our dwarf bronze to paint all of the uh, all of the bronze Slash gold. I don't. I don't think it's gold though. On on Krell's armor, I, I believe it looks more like really dark, rusted bronze to me. So we're gonna be painting that with bad at black in the next part of our tutorial. And then you're gonna get to see. For those of you who are watching this after seeing my lizard men video the amazing difference between shading a color with a darker pig a darker shade like bad at black or devlin devlin mud and then shading it with a warmer richer color like griffin sepia ogren flesh is also a nice warm color to wash your golds with if you want that that more reddish gold Piece. 
there's always a, a modeling threshold that you have to pass, or a painting threshold rather, where you go from not looking forward to painting a certain model to all of a sudden really wanting to paint that model. And uh, it's when you see that the work you're doing is starting to pay off and the model is starting to look like what you picture it. Whether that's the Games Workshop standard or if you're doing like an alternate color scheme, there's always a point when you're painting where before then you're like, oh man, this is gonna take me forever. This paint job looks horrible, what was I thinking? And then once you pass it, and you start to feel like, oh, okay, I feel like, like I can see what, what my model's supposed to look like in the end. And there it's all downhill. Usually when I'm painting, that modeling threshold gets past when I'm applying the washes, but Krell is just so f packed with detail that I'm already starting to feel like I'm looking forward to finishing him. I feel motivated. Alright. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our bubonic brown. We're going to paint the back part of his cloak. really yellow but we are going to tone it down with the Dublin mud in just a little while so this is just for us to get a, get a little bit of a base color on it them together and then wash the length of this axe. take our Bata Black and we're going to shade all of the bone areas with it. As well as all of the uh, leather bandages, so starting from the feet, painting his little white toes. And his boots slash foot wraps. Top. 
Now you don't want too much bad at black. But, um, because you don't want it to pool and darken the surface of the bones. You kind of want it more in the, in the shadows and the recesses. I think uh, with this wash, you might as well just use it on this entire back banner that he's got. Just because there's so much shadows up there anyway. And that's we're also going to be using the black to highlight the metal, so I might as well do that now. I'm putting the black in the fur, all of the fur as well. Alright, in the next phase of our um, shading process, we've let, I've let my bronze, dwarf bronze dry. Sorry, I forgot to shade this guy's face. I let the dwarf bronze dry, I let the silver dry, and um, what we're going to do now is we're going to use Bada Black, and we are going to highlight, or I'm sorry, shade all of the armor, and this is the red armor as well as the plates that we've painted dwarf bronze. We're gonna get just a dark shaded look to all of it. While you're painting you can also drag some of the the bad eye black wash over the cape but not too much you don't want the cape to turn out black but some small shadows uh, in the folds is is all right at this point the inside of the cape. Try not to um, get any on the outside if possible. Then when you get to the horns here at the top, you're going to take your bad black and drag it from the tips or the outside and drag it in. So for example, I'm going to paint the edges and I'm going to feather that uh, black color at the ends. Like so.
to redo the denim stone. That's okay. It looks like I got some of it too close to the inside. So I'm just going to drag the paint all the way in and then pull it, pull it back out to the tip. There we go. Okay, so this is what your model should look like at this point. We're going to give the uh, black wash a little bit of time to dry now and we're going to take our Den Devlin mud and we are going to wash the insides of the horns as well as the outsides of the cape. So let's start with the cape. So we're going to use your Devlin mud and paint the yellow uh, fur trim. And with that, you can be a little bit more liberal with your application. You can really get it down into the into all the little folds of that fur trim. You don't want to do it that too much with the actual cape because the cape has lots of flat surfaces. It's mostly like a flat surface, right? The, the rest of the the cape. There to be like pools of wash in the cape. All right, and like I said, we're also going to paint the inside of the cape as well as a little bit of the horns. cape or a cloak? Huh, that's a good question. All you English majors out there. Alright, and the inside of the horn, we'll get to that in just a second. Now, if this were Tomb Kings, I would be doing this with Griffin Sepia to give it more of a blasted, baked, desert, uh, you know, kind of look. But with Tomb Kings, or Vampire Counts rather, the, the bone should look dark and uh, have a darker, darker finish to give it more of a gothic look to it. I'm also going to use the Devlin mud on the skulls and the silver on the back to give it a little bit more color. We're going to highlight these up in just a second. Can't really tell what they are right now because of all the washes, but we're going to highlight those skulls up on the back of the banner. Okay, the last thing you're going to do in this step 
of washes is you're going to take your bed up black again and you're going to water it down with some water and you're going to run it over the blade of the axe. This will tie your hawk turquoise highlight into the rest of the uh, the rest of the blade. So it doesn't look as stark. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back for the next step. show you one more time what the model looks like. I love washes. Oh, looks like I didn't paint the end of his, um, his axe half there. Anyways, I'll do that and I will uh, come back and wash it and then in the last part of this video we'll come back and we'll do some preliminary highlighting to prep for part 3 which is going to be the finish of this uh, figure. Alright, so uh, we could end the video here but I want to get started on the highlighting. So we're going to get started with highlighting the armor back up and we're going to use our scab red to start. So, what you want to do is uh, decide how much of the bad app black you want to leave in the recesses and just paint around it. And I like to, I like to feather my paint and instead of just slapping it on, I like to have little, just a little paint on the brush and then just lightly feather it on the surface. It gives you more control. when you're doing highlighting work you want to find a technique that works best for you and I found that for me when I'm highlighting my this feathering technique seems to work really well for me At this point, you might be looking at your armor and thinking that fine cast is just completely lost whatever standards it had because of how um, how bubbly and pockmarked the armor is. But you have to remember that a lot of that is their way of showing corrosion on uh, on the model. So. It's actually a good thing in this case. Now if this were a dwarf model or a wood elf or an empire general or something that would not have heavy duty corrosion then a little bit of nerd rage would be perfectly acceptable. But in this case what I'm talking about is like look at this guy's breastplate and look at all those holes in there that normally be very unseemly and unattractive but in this case we're gonna do some verdigris and 
and weathering and aging and it's gonna look really awesome. There. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're going to paint the uh, highlight the um let's see should we do the clip no let's do i said codex gray in the beginning so i'm going to stick with it i was thinking of introducing some new colors but i'll wait till video number three codex gray we're going to paint all of the fur on the armor so again you want to water down the paint thin it down and then make sure that it's not all watery on your brush though you wanna sorry about that you want to get it on your brush and make sure that you can control it and if you water it down and don't clean your brush off enough I don't know why I'm rambling so much I'm sorry I just had some really spicy Thai food Don't worry if it seems a little uh, garishly bright at this point. We're just getting the highlights onto the onto the fur trim, and we're gonna dull it down with some watered down bad at black in just a little while. So I've been playing a lot of Mass Effect 2, getting ready for Mass Effect 3 coming out. I realized that I have to go through the game again because um, I had it for Xbox 360 and then I got the red ring and uh, so I bought it again for the PS3 later when I bought a PS3 and um, I just didn't really finish it though. So I'm like, oh shoot man, I'm going to have to go in and finish the game so that I can import a save file into number three. That's good, it helps me get back into the, the mythology. Okay, after you do the fur trim, you're also going to want to highlight the mohawk. So I'm going to be doing uh, an edge highlighting here. Just dragging the edge of my brush over the mohawk. Oops. One thing about carrot and granite you'll notice at this point is that it's really shiny. You might think that you missed some some parts of your painting with it, but uh, no, it's just that it's so shiny it reflects light. There we go. The last thing we're gonna do with our codex gray is highlight a little bit of the hair of the skeletons, uh, the skulls. What I'm also going to do when um, I cut this video is I'm going to start working on highlighting up using the colors that I've already used. Just like we did with scab red on the armor, I'm going to take some denim stone and re-highlight the, uh, the skulls. Maybe not necessarily the cloak, but some of the, some of the bone on Krell. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll show you before we wrap up this video what that looks like. Alright so I painted, uh, re-highlighted re up these uh, finger bones, the toe bones, his skull, the skulls on the back of his banner and um, I realized when I was painting his finger bones that he's got, he's actually got 
um, jewelry. Uh, he's got rings on his fingers, so I'm gonna paint those up right now. Uh, on both fingers, which you can see now that we've got the shading where those are, you might not be able to see it beforehand. It's really obvious that they're there now. So there's one, and then on his right hand, on his ring finger, right there. All right, so um, we're gonna leave our model as at this point now. The, the last thing we're actually gonna do before we leave him though is we're gonna take our bad ad black and we are going to just go back over the fur bits that we that we washed just a little while ago. It's gonna tie the codex gray into the keratin granite and give us uh, a really nice looking blend to all of that. Oh, I'm so excited, I'm gonna finish a model. It took me like how many weeks to get the lizardmen done and we're finishing Krell in like, what, a day, two days? This is also when you can go back and reshade some of the some of the leather bits if you feel like they need to be worked on again or or anything else. Maybe if the scab red was a little too bright, you could tone it back down a little bit. That's fine. The great thing about the washes are if you water them down, just adding a little bit of water to them since they're already you know, just about the consistency of water is that they um, can really be watered down if you want. I'm going to just reapply it to the chest piece here. And let's see some hair. And that's it. So stay tuned for the next part. The next part of the tutorial is probably going to be the last part of the video when we're going to go over the, the fine details of highlighting uh, even more the axe, the axe uh, haft as well as the axe head, giving some more highlights and um, highlighting up the metal and then doing the, the verdigris work for all of, the, all of the, the armor, the red parts of the armor as well as the um, metal. Also we're going to try and make the horns look a little bit like the, the horn on, on the GW product page which is uh, starts like kind of brown at the tips and then fades to kind of like almost like a red yellowish glow as it works its way up towards the center um, so that'll be exciting so stay tuned for that and that's all gonna be in part three of how to paint a spooky giant skeleton man with an axe